Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Wise tales from storytellers around the world, which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello, Super Great Kids, and how are you? I'm happy because we're changing themes from fairy tales to trickster stories, which means we're going to have stories about all sorts of tricksters, from rabbits to spiders to cunning magic pots. We're going to hear first about a rabbit from Baden Prince Jr. And that rabbit is called Br'er Rabbit or Brother Rabbit, and it's well loved in the southern United States and in the Caribbean. Just before we start this story, I wonder if you can think of your favourite trickster story. It might be an Anansi tale, or it might be a story about rabbit, or coyote, or raven, or something else. Well, we have a quick word with the grown-ups. Ready? Off you go. Hello, super great kids. I'm back. I wonder which is your favourite trickster story. Anansi and the Magic Pot is pretty popular on this podcast. Or Anansi and the Hot Pepper Soup. Or maybe you like Kojo the Rabbit from West Africa. Or Coyote and Baby Turtle from the United States. And there are lots more. Are you ready for our first trickster story of this year? Then let's give a warm welcome to Baden Prince Jr. Mouth open, story jump out. Hi everyone, I'm Baden. I originally come from the island of Antigua in the West Indies. And I've been living and working in England now since 1970, which is a lot more years than I care to think about. And this next story is um, a Bra Rabbit story. And it's the story of Bra Rabbit and Bra Wolf. Bra Rabbit and Bra Wolf were neighbors. And where they lived, it was a bit like being back home in Antigua, really, because the place was dry. It suffered from drought periodically. They didn't get much rain. And in order to have enough water for cooking and for washing and just generally to use as you go about your daily business, they had to go on a long trek down the hill across the field, up the other hill, down the other side, round and down into the valley until they got to the reservoir. And there they'd fill up their pails and buckets and barrels with water, and then they'd have to make the long trek back, round and down and up and down again and across the field and back up the hill to where they lived. After a while, Bro Wolf started getting fed up with this. And he turned to Bro Rabbit and he said, Bro Rabbit, I've been thinking, you know, and I've been thinking that what we should do is we should sink a well. And in that well, we'd catch whatever water will come when the rains fall. And that way, we'll have all the water we need and we won't have to be making this long, arduous journey every couple of days just to go and get water. What do you think? Well, the thing about Br'er Rabbit is that he was quite a lazy fella, and he didn't fancy the idea of all of that digging and putting down bricks and shoring up walls with wood and that amount of hard work on the hot sun. No. So he turned to Br'er Wolf and he said, um... Bro Wolf, I don't think that's such a good idea, you know. And actually, tell the truth, I don't need as much water as you. And Bro Wolf said, what? And Bro Rabbit said, yeah, most of the water that we bring back, you're the one who uses it. Me? If I'm thirsty, I can actually satisfy my thirst by just sipping the dew off a blade of grass. That's enough for me. Bro Wolf looked at him as if he was crazy, and he said, 
I know what you're up to, you know. You're just trying to avoid hard work. Bray Rabbit said, no, 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 no. But I understand why you would want to go and dig a well. But as I said, I have no need to. Bray Wolf said, all right, I'll do it by myself. Bray Rabbit, I'm telling you from now, if I catch you coming to my well and stealing my water, there's going to be big, big trouble. So Bray Wolf went off and he worked for 20 days and 20 nights. He sank a borehole, he got bricks, he got rocks, he got mortar, he got planks to shore up the sides. And at the end of the 20 days, he'd had a well perfectly made with a pulley, with a bucket and a rope to actually get the water up. And in fact, when he built the well, he got lucky. He actually hit an underground spring. So he didn't even have to wait for rain. His well filled up as if by magic overnight. Or oh, Wolf was so happy. But sure enough, he noticed that every night he would leave out a bucket of water to do his cooking in the morning and to wash his face and hands and feet and brush his teeth. Then he'd get up in the morning and go, and most of the water in the bucket would be gone. He said to himself, no, somebody's coming and stealing my water, and I've got a pretty good idea who it is. So he started to set up at night, waiting and watching. But somehow or other, he was never able to catch the culprit. Either he'd fall asleep and wake up half an hour later and catch himself, or he'd blink or something would distract him just for a minute. And when he looked, his water would be gone. And this went on and on for a good couple of weeks until, as luck would have it, one night it rained. And the next morning when Brewolf came out, all around the well, the ground was muddy. And in the mud, what do you think Brewolf could see? That's right, footprints. Rabbit footprints, to be exact. And he said, yes, aha, Br Rabbit, I've caught you. And then the next time he saw Br Rabbit, he just ran up to him, grabbed him by his neck and said, you see you? I know what you've been up to. I definitely know it's you. Br Rabbit pleaded in a sense and tried to cry and say, no, 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 it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Honestly, it wasn't me. And Br Wolf said, all right, you say it's not you, so I'm going to let you go. But if I catch you again, we'll see what happens next time. And Br Wolf determined he was going to actually catch Br Rabbit in the act. So what he did, he went out and he made himself a tar baby. Now, a tar baby is a big, sticky ball. Try and imagine a huge ball of glue painted with black tar. Sticky, gloopy. But instead of just putting the tar baby down, he dressed it up. He dressed it up to look like a young person. He put a shirt on it. He put trousers on it. He put on a hat. And then he got a stick and put it up the back and planted the stick in the ground so that the thing wouldn't move. And he left it there. And he said, let's see what happens now. Well, that night, along comes Br Rabbit to steal the water as usual. And he passes the tar baby, mistaking it for a young person. In the Caribbean, as a child, you're taught to be respectful to grown-ups. So, when Br Rabbit passed this young person, as he thought it was, he did what any adult would do. He said, good evening. And the tar baby, the young person, as he thought, was expected to say, good evening, sir. But of course, the tar baby didn't speak. That stopped Br Rabbit in his tracks. He turned around and said, wait, this child doesn't have any manners? He turned back and he said, excuse me. Um, didn't you hear me say good evening? The tar baby didn't answer. This got Br Rabbit mad. He walked right up to the tar baby and grabbed it by its shoulder, shook it, and said, Your parents didn't teach you any manners, but I intend to teach you some. Now, I'm going to say again, Good evening, what do you say? 
The tar baby didn't answer. The rabbit went to draw back his hand and realized his hand was stuck. Ah, he said, so not only are you rude, but you think you can grab me and hold on to me like this? And he grabbed the tar baby by the other arm to really give it a good shaking and teach it a lesson. But when he went to move his other hand, his other hand was also stuck. He leaned forward into the tar baby to give himself some leverage to pull his arms away. Next thing he knew, his head was stuck to the tar baby's head. He said, no, 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 no. You know what? I'm going to stamp on your foot to make you let me go. He stamped on one of the tar baby's feet. Now his foot was stuck. He stamped on the other foot. Now both his feet, both his hands and his head were all stuck to the tar baby. And that's where Bro Wolf found him the next morning when he came out, completely stuck. This time, said Bro Wolf, you can't have anything to say for yourself. I've caught you red-handed, red-footed, and red-headed, and I'm going to deal with you. <laughs> what are you going to do to me, said Bro Rabbit? I don't know, said Bro Wolf. But... Maybe it would be ironic, would it not, if I tipped you into the well, <laughs> given that you didn't want to help me build it. Oh, thank God for that, said the rabbit. Please, tip me into the well. You know why? That will be a quick ending. But whatever you do, please don't throw me into the brambles or the briar patch. Hmm. Brewolf thought to himself, he wants me to put him in the well so that he'll be nice and quick. No, 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 no. That'll be too good for him. Let me see. Ah, I could actually start up a big fire over there with all that straw and throw him in there. Yeah, that's what I think I'll do. I think I'll throw the rabbit in the fire. Oh, thank you, said the rabbit. Thank you, thank you. That fire will be gone in no time, but oh, please, that'll be better than you putting me in the briar patch. Brewolf thought to himself, no, wait, that's the second time he said that. Oh, I see, Bra Rabbit, he said. You don't want to go into the briar patch. No, said Bra Rabbit, no. Why not? Bra Rabbit said, with all those sharp edges and those thorns, those things will tear up my fur, and every time I turn and struggle to try and get out, they'll lacerate my skin, and if I'm not careful, they'll cut up my face and maybe, you know, juke me in my eyes, poke my eyes. And Bra Wolf said, ha! I know exactly what to do with you. And with that, he pulled the rabbit off the tar baby, walked over to the briar patch, and threw him in. Immediately, the rabbit started laughing. You fool, he said, you idiot. I was born in this briar patch. I know it like the back of my hand. In fact, not only was I born in the briar patch, my father was born in the briar patch, and so was my grandfather. This is my home. And with that, he turned and he scampered off into the distance, laughing his head off and leaving the wolf standing there feeling foolish. The rabbit had done it again. Thank you very much, Baden, for sharing that story. I can tell that Baden really likes Br'er Rabbit. Maybe he was a bit of a trickster when he was young. So here's my question. Do you think Br'er Rabbit will dare to go back and use Br'er Wolf's well again? Or will he have to dig one of his own for fear of what Br'er Wolf might do to him if he catches him stealing from his well again? Now, I have a quick announcement to make. We like nothing more than hearing from storytellers around the world. And we're very pleased to be lucky enough to have heard tales recently from Wangari in Kenya, Masako in Japan, Liz in Northern Ireland, Simone from Germany, Rebecca from Belgium and Maya from Tanzania. And we'd love to hear from an indigenous Australian storyteller and a Native American. So, if anyone who is listening is a storyteller or knows a storyteller from either of those cultures, we'd love to hear from you. Now, 
Lots of you have been joining our club and hopping into our owlet's nest. So, it's time to dip into our bag of happies and say thank you and hello to some new owlets and some existing fans. Hello to loyal owlet and super fan Etty, who lives in the UK and listens to just about all of our stories. Etty has two dogs, Coco and Daphne, and she will be turning eight very soon. <laughs> hello, Etty. And hello to six year old Parker from Houston in Texas in the US. His favourite story is The Ghost of the Bloody Finger. He's also rather fond of the hairy toe. Eek! He listens to a playlist of scary stories every night as he goes to bed. Parker, that's very brave of you. I hope your dreams aren't filled with green, wriggling, hairy toes. And staying in Texas, let's say hoo, 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 to Millie, who is seven, and George, who is ten. Millie's favourite story is how the phoenix got its bright feathers. And George's favourite story is River Mama. They enjoy listening as a family every night. Welcome to the nest, all of you. And a big hello to Sasha, who is four, and Kieran, who is one, who also live in Texas. Sasha's current favourites are Gulbaha, the Persian Rapunzel, the Hairy Toe, and the Three Little Pigs. She even likes Baba Yaga. And Kieran thinks the songs are the best part of the stories, and he dances along to every tune. Go for it, Kieran. And across to Winchester in Massachusetts next to say hello to eight-year-old twin owlets, Daria and Nikon. They hope to come to London soon. Oh, lucky you. We might see you in London then. And hoo, 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 and hello and welcome to Carl, who is five, and Ida, who is eight. They live in Seattle in Washington. They both love Frau Holler and the Tinderbox, told by Paul Albra, who tells very funny stories. And across to New Hampshire now to say hoo 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 and hello to Griffin, who is five, and Cooper, who is three. They listen every day after school. Their favourite stories are Baba Yaga and How the Snow Got Its Colour, both stories with a snowy theme. Have you listened to Strawberries in Winter or The Boy and the Snow Wolf? You could add that to your snowy list. And over now to Scottsdale in sunny Arizona to welcome new owlets Calvin, who is seven, and Addison, who is three. Welcome to the club and happy listening. And hello to four owlets in Chicago. Maya, who is nine, Aidan, who is seven, Zeke, who is five, and Emuna, who is four months. Their favourite story is, again, the ghost of the bloody finger. And hoo, 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 and hello to Owlets John, who is seven, and Lucy, who is five. They live in Wenham in Massachusetts, and their favourite stories are the Baba Yaga stories and the ghost of the bloody finger. Eek! And off to New Jersey next to say hello to Nika Rose, who will be five next month. Nika Rose also loves the ghost of the bloody finger. Welcome, Nika. And a big hello to James, who is eight from Liverpool in the UK. Liverpool, what a great city, James. I love the museums and the waterfront and, of course, the people. Glad you're enjoying the stories. And hello to super fans in Lebanon, in the Middle East. Seven-year-old Ivy and five-year-old Jude. Oh, that's exciting to have fans in Lebanon. Ivy's favourite story is Cat of Rushes and Jude's is the dog and the peacock. They say, we love super great kids stories because it makes us curious. Hurrah! 
And our pick of the week picture comes from Tulsi, who is six, who has sent us three pictures. My favourite is inspired by the story Pixie Dust, where the pixie is holding her baby. It's very imaginative. Thanks for sending this, Tulsi. If you'd like to see all the super great pictures sent in this week, go to facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. More Owl at Welcomes next week. Thanks for being patient. And thanks to all of you who are subscribing to our podcast. If you'd like to support our podcast on Apple Podcasts or on Patreon, you'll hear our stories advert free and you'll get over 35 bonus stories and at least 20 super great scary stories. For more information, go to our website at supergreatkidsstories.com. And if you like books, it's World Book Day in the UK and Ireland this week. If you're an owlet, I'll put a list of recommended books to read in your Owlet letter. Happy reading! This podcast was produced at Wardour Studios in fabulous Fitzrovia in London.